Hi there, this lesson is going to be on um, 3.4, solving equations using multiplication and division. Um, today you're gonna be looking for nine things to write down in your notes, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to make sure you understand is basically from when we talked about yesterday, the addition property of equality and the subtraction property of equality, it can also be done with multiplication and division. It's essentially saying if you multiply each side of an equation by the same number, you get the same thing or an equivalent equation. And same thing with dividing. If you divide each side of the equation by the same number, it produces an equivalent equation as well. So the first thing that you're going to write down, similar to what you wrote down yesterday in your notes, when you see multiplication, use division to solve. And when you see division, use multiplication to solve. Go ahead and take time now to pause the video so you can write these two things down in your notes. Once you're done, click play. So these I'm just going to ask you to watch. Notice again, whenever you see multiplication, you're going to use division to solve. So I'm basically seeing 5 times x is equal to 25. So to solve for it, I'm going to do divide by 5. And notice I'm still focusing on what number is connected to the variable. That's the number I need to get rid of. So divide, 5 divided by 5 is going to give me 1x or just x. And 25 divided by 5 will give me 5. So the first answer here would be x is equal to 5. Again, you can check your work by plugging in whatever you said x was equal to. If 5 is 5, divide, 5 times 5, 25, it is. So that means I got my answer correct. Same thing over here. I have 6x is equal to 3. To get x by itself, I have to do the opposite of what's being happened to it. Right now, 6 is being multiplied with x. So to undo it, I'm going to divide by 6. 6 divided by 6 is just going to give me 1x or x. 3 divided by 6 is going to give me 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 would be my answer. Again, I can plug this in back to the equation to make sure my answer is correct. 6 times 0 0.5 is 3. For these over here on the right side of the screen, you see division happening. And anytime you see division, you use multiplication to solve for it. So you're basically undoing what's happening with the variable. Since I see divided by 4, the opposite of that is times by 4. So I'm going to do that to both sides. When you divide something by 4 and then times it by 4, it basically undoes it. So those 4s will cancel out. So all I'm left with is y. And then we have 11 times 4, and that's going to give me 44. Again, you can plug in your answer. Is 44 divided by 4 equal to 11? Yes, so that's my correct answer. Um, this last one on the screen also is a division problem. Y over 12 also means Y divided by 12, and that's going to be equal to 3. So you're essentially multiplying by 12 on both sides. 12 times a divided by 12 will cancel out, so all you're left with will be Y, and then 3 divided by 12 will give you your answer. That means my answer is going to be equal to 36. Again, I can check my work and say, is 36 over 12 equal to 3? It is, so y is equal to 36 is correct. These next few you're going to try on your own, so let's go ahead and take time now to pause the video, get to the variable by itself, and then click play. Remember, you can use the steps show inverse operation and then solve. Go ahead and try them. All right, let's go ahead and check over. So number two, I see x divided by 3. In order to solve for an, an equation sign that's equal to, or sorry, division, I'm going to multiply. So I'm going to multiply by 3 on the left side, and I'm also going to multiply by 3 on the right side. The 3 times divided by 3 will cancel out because they're opposite operations, so I'm left with just x or 1x. Over here, though, I'm going to have to be do. I'm going to have to do negative six to times three, and that's going to give me negative 18. So my answer for number two should be negative 18. Again, I can plug in negative 18 to the equation, and I still get a true equation. So that means I solved it correctly. Over here, notice that negative four and y are on the right side. That's totally fine. You're still going to be trying to get y by itself. I see negative 4 and y being multiplied, so to undo it, I'm going to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. These will cancel out because negative 4 divided by negative 4 is equal to 1. So all I'm left with is y. Over here, though, I'm not going to get 
um, maybe a whole number. I know 4 can go into 18 four times with 2 left over, so I can write my answer maybe as a mixed number, negative 4 and 1 half. Um, you could also write it as negative 4.5. Either one would work there. Again, go ahead and pause the video here just to try these really quickly. Once you're done, click play and we'll look at the very last thing in our notes. Alright, so number 4, I'm going to divide to solve. So divide both sides by 2. K is equal to negative 4. Number 5, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. T is equal to negative 5. Um, number 6, I'm also going to divide. Divide both sides by 5 because that's the side that M is attached to. M is equal to negative 4. And then over here for number 7, divide by 4. H is equal to negative 4. How did we do? The last part of um, this I want to show you is how to solve these when you have fractions. Okay, so you do want to pay very close attention here. When you see a fraction, obviously the fraction is being multiplied with x. So what you have to do to undo it is to divide by this fraction. Here is where it's going to get a little tricky and you will have to show your work. Okay, so don't say, Miss Mullins, I don't want to show my work. Sorry, you've got to show your work here. Um, negative 4 fifths divided by negative 4 fifths will cancel out and give you an x, or 1x. But over here, I still have negative 8 divided by negative 4 fifths. Back in chapter 2, we talked about how to divide with fractions, and you don't actually divide them. Instead, you have to do something called copy dot flip. So I'm going to copy the negative 8 over 1, a dot for multiplication, and then flip to make a 5 over 4. I can multiply straight across. Negative 8 times negative 5 is 40. 1 times 4 is 4. 40 over 4 is equal to 10. So that means x will be equal to 10. So basically what you're doing is you are going to flip the fraction if your question looks like this and multiply. That's the same thing as dividing. Dividing a fraction means to multiply by its reciprocal. So multiplying by the flipped fraction. So these next two you're going to try on your own. They are set up very similar to what we, I just showed you how to do. Go ahead and take time now to pause the video. Once you're done, click play so you can check your work. All right, here we go. So for number eight, I have to, I see two thirds being times by X. So I'm dividing two thirds on both sides. These two thirds will cancel out. So all I'm left with is X. But over here, I have negative 14 divided by two thirds. I need to show copy dot flip, so copy negative 14 over 1 dot, and then flip to be 3 over 2. I notice that, and I didn't talk about this on the previous slide, but I can cross cancel here, so I'm going to show that real quick. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 14 divided by 2 is 7. Now it's a little bit easier for me to multiply. Negative, four, negative 7 times 3 is negative 21 over 1, which is equal to negative 21. So x will be equal to negative 21. Over here on number 9, same thing's happening. Eight, negative 8 fifths is being multiplied by b, so I'm going to divide negative 8 fifths by b. Divide negative 8 fifths. And you're only focusing on the, remember, you're only focusing on the number that is with the variable, because the whole point is to get the variable by itself. So b would be all that's left, but I still have 5 divided by negative 8 fifths. I'm going to copy dot flip to solve, so copy 5 over 1. A dot and then flip to be negative 5 eighths. When I multiply straight across, I get neg um, negative 25 over 8. And then I'm just going to change that into a mixed number. 8 can go into 25 three times with 1 left over. So my answer will be B is equal to negative 3 and 1 eighth. So that's going to be concluding our notes for today. So make sure you have those nine things written down, and we'll see you next time.